Save Our Seminary at Forest Glen, Seminary Stories, Buildings, Landscape, and Sculpture. I'm Gene Rich. I'll be the presenter today on the topic, Finding the Lost Mermaid, from the Save Our Seminary Glen Restoration Committee. While I'm speaking, uh, the other members of the committee were all key participants in the story I'm going to tell, so I'd like to recognize them now. Tony Bailey, Pat Crawford, F.T. Clark, Steve McLaughlin, Bonnie Rosenthal, and Frank Riley. Our story begins in um, a couple of years ago, outside the ballroom, when the Archives Committee is meeting to, um, uh, to uh, set up a uh, display of lost sculptures from the National Park Seminary uh, school days. And Chris Maines brought out a photograph of one of the lost sculptures, this photograph of the mermaid. And I, and I think a couple of other members of the archives committee were pretty surprised to discover that there had been a mermaid sculpture somewhere in the Glen. So as our Save Our Seminary Glen Restoration Committee convened and started doing research on lost features of the Glen, we were posed with this uh, surprise. There was a mermaid in the Glen, and a variety of questions occurred to us. When was the mermaid there? Where was the mermaid located? When did it disappear? Because it's certainly not there now. Where did it come from? And is it possible that there could ever be a mermaid in the Glen again? As part of our research um, to discover the lost features of the Glen of the National Park Seminary, um, our committee has been busy over the last year going through scrapbooks and photo albums that were put together by uh, students during the school years. And here's a scrapbook photo of the mermaid from the 1920s. You can see that back at that time, the mermaid was certainly a, um, uh, a, a feature of the Glen that was very popular with some of the students. So we know the mermaid was there in the Glen in the 1920s. What about where it was located? Where is this mermaid statue located? Well, Frank Riley and I, who each have spent a fair amount of time wandering about uh, in the Glen of the National Park Seminary, felt it was pretty obvious that this must be along one of the streams in the Glen. But there are actually three streams in there now, uh, the same three streams that were there uh, back in the 1920s. This is a uh, an only partially accurate um, um, uh, artistic description uh, or depiction of the, the National Park Seminary Glen back in the 1920s. And I'll point out some of the key features here. First, of course, we've got um, uh, historic buildings that everyone is familiar with. There's the Colonial House. There's the Maine, which was the original Ye Forest Inn. And there's the president's house. And then here's the lost path down to the ground staircase, which is slowly disintegrating, uh, but still there. We've learned that this was actually a county road uh, back in the 1920s. Uh, here's where the grotto was. And here's where the stream was and still is. Uh, this stream actually was a combination of a stream that came, comes down today from Hume Drive and goes below Colonial House. And there's this other stream that came in from the Northeast, uh, now comes down from along 495. And these streams back in the 1920s went under a footbridge, which is now lost to erosion. And the streams emerged here and then passed under a lost bridge for the county road that crossed the stream and went this way. 
By the way, this is where the spring is still. Uh, this is the road to the villa that's still there. This is the justice court stairs that are still there. And there's the statue of justice. So um, we puzzled over, well, I wondered maybe the, maybe the mermaid was along here. Um, maybe the mermaid was along here somewhere. Um, and of course, maybe the mermaid was over on this side. So where was this mermaid? As we studied this photograph, we discovered, oh my goodness, there are these odd bits of vegetation. Um, maybe they would tell us where this mermaid statue was. After studying this photograph, some of our committee members realized, oh, well, we've seen, we've seen pictures with, um, with bushes like this before. We've seen them along the Justice Court stairs. Here's a photo from Justice Court stairs going up to Justice. This is in the 1927 to 29 period. So those look like the same kinds of shrubs that are in that photo. So we determined, oh, well, these must be the yew trees along Justice Court stairs. So that's giving us a really good idea what stream this mermaid might have been at. Here's another picture we've discovered of the mermaid from around 1923 again. And uh, now we realize, oh, well, here's a stone wall. Here's a road. This is what we now call the Villa Road, with the villa up in this direction. So Justice Court um, stairs here, Justice up in here somewhere, the stream down below. So a um, couple of autumns ago, our committee uh, uh, got together to study different uh, areas where we thought that there had been features of the Glen that are now lost. And um, with um, this bit of research from the photographs, we were looking around in this area because this is where we thought the mermaid must have been. Here we've got this overgrown now yew trees along Justice Court stairs. Here's the Villa Road. And um, Frank Riley was clambering around here along the hillside trying to look um, for spots. And F.T. Clark was looking down and said, hey, Frank, what is that there by your feet? Frank uh, brushes some uh, uh, dead leaves and dirt away. And we find this platform, which we now think was the platform for the mermaid family. Now, once we had um, an idea of where the mermaid might have been, suddenly we start seeing the mermaid in other photographs. So here we've got a scrapbook photo um, called Glen Stream at Little Falls. We never heard of Little Falls before. You can sort of see a Little Falls there. And then there's this object behind. And we enlarge this photo, and there's the mermaid. So um, we've done more work to try to figure out where this photo was. This is the stone wall along the spring. So this is, again, the stream coming down from Hume Drive. This is the Villa Road. Here's the drive bridge that used to be there that went from the villa over to the National Park Seminary. Again, there's the mermaid. Here's a photo from present day. There's the spring. Here's that stone wall that runs from the spring. There's where the mermaid platform was that we found. Again, there's the remnants of the Villa Road. And as I will show in a moment, there used to be a path we've discovered that went from the spring uh, all along uh, this stream down to the bridge below the Colonial House. Okay, so there was a mermaid in the Glen. We know it was there starting in the 20s. Uh, we know where it was located. Uh, when did it disappear? Well, here we have a scrapbook photo from 1938. 
this is, um, as I will show you in a minute, uh, along the path from the spring to the bridges below the Colonial House. We've called this area the Trailside Stop. We don't know what it was called during the school years, but that seems like a good way to describe this feature. This is a photo from around 1919. And here's the path coming from the spring. Here's the footbridge this young woman was standing on in the earlier photo. And um, here she is um, with the um, Um, the spring in the background, the spring footbridge is here, the stone wall from the spring is here, here's the path to this trailside stop, here's the footbridge approaching the trailside stop, and there is the mermaid. So we know the mermaid was there in 1938. Now, of course, we know that by the time of the 1980s, when um, photographs to document the history um, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the property were being taken again. There was no sign of, of a mermaid. So sometime between 1938 and the 1980s, the mermaid disappeared. But where did the mermaid come from? Well, uh, Bonnie Rosenthal was doing research and uh, found this lovely um, photo of a mermaid fountain that's in Bellingrath Gardens. This is a terracotta uh, mermaid fountain. And the history of Bellingrath Gardens says that this um, was acquired from a property in New Orleans uh, in the 1920s. So this is not the National Park Seminary mermaid, obviously, but probably both of them are copies from of some other popular mermaid fountain garden feature uh, of that era. Here's a close up of the Bellingraph Gardens mermaid fountain. And here to compare is a photograph of the mermaid uh, in position at the National Park Seminary. And this, of course, reminds us that, uh, that this was not just a statue, this was a fountain. And you can see um, very similar features to the features uh, of the Ballingrath Gardens uh, mermaid fountain. Now here's another view looking down on the platform from the Villa Road, and uh, we realize, oh, this platform had a hole in the middle, so this was probably the hole that offered the water source for the fountain when the mermaid fountain was functioning. And this is the stream, it's dry at this point. The, um, the spring and the, the path and the stone wall along the spring are over here. Uh, this, this is a stone path that we've just uncovered from this path to what we call the trailside stop. Uh, and then you can see erosion has taken out this path in this area. Is, it, is there any way in which the mermaid could come back to the Glen in some way? Well, a similar statue was sold in 2010 for $950. Uh, you can see that, well, this statue, the shell is incomplete, and uh, this seems to be a statue, not a fountain. So, the, um, so just to clarify, there was the, uh, the mermaid in the glen was holding a shell that, uh, that represented the outlet for the fountain. Another approach to recovery uh, in the 21st century is 3D printing. Various companies offer digitization of artistic elements and say they will reproduce them with accuracy and precision at various scales. And, uh, and one can uh, create a realistic 3D printing on various polymers. Now you need to obtain a 3D scanned image. You'd have to ensure permission to copy. Um, 
You have to determine what materials you would need to, to reproduce um, the uh, mermaid statue or fountain on so that it would be durable. And then, of course, most importantly, you have to establish a means to protect this kind of restored Glen feature from defacement or even worse, theft. After all, we suspect that the previous mermaid fountain was stolen sometime after uh, 1938. But there she is, uh, the lost mermaid fountain awaiting recovery. And maybe someday in the future, um, uh, we can have her in the Glen again. As I close, I just want to mention the mission of the Glen Restoration Committee is to preserve, protect, and restore the National Park Seminary Glen as a cultural landscape and promote public awareness of, support for, and access to the Glen. Thanks for watching. Please visit us at saveourseminary.org to find out about our tour and event schedules and how you can help continue to save our seminary. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram.